Hi everybody, Joseph here from Breakaway Camp Van here. So we're just going to do a little walk around of our roller team, Safiro 696 here. So if you've hired this for the 2023 season by this particular model, you'll either get Kayla Louise or Madison Marie. So we'll have a quick walk around the outside, show you how everything works on the outside. Then we'll go inside and show you how all that works, so you've got some idea when you come to pick it up. Right, so when you pick the motor home up, you'll get the keys. So this is your vehicle key. So this will let you in the cab doors with the ignition and the bonnet release and lock the cab doors. This one here will work your habitation door and all your lockers on the outside. So remember, if you lock the van with this one, it won't lock the habitation door or the lockers. Always make sure you lock it with these ones. And do not remove this fob from the keys either because this is the air immobiliser key and it won't work. So make sure that's on the keys at all the time. If you need to bring the bonnet for anything, ignition key goes in this little slot here turn it to the left then to the right and that will allow the bonnet to lift up and you've got to catch it and hold it up as so this is your water filler here for your screen wash this will be full when you pick it up so hopefully it'll last you higher but if you need to top it up that's it there and that's a dipstick for your oil so should you wish to check the oil if you're on a long trip you can but I say we'll check all that before you go I say to close the bonnet, simple as just fold the safety leg away. Just get it out and about here and just let it drop like that and that's it shut then. Just pull your key straight out and that's it locked. I say just give it a little tug underneath there just to make sure it is locked. It should be. Now should you need to for any reason get towed off and maybe it's a wet pitch or something like that. This is the front towing point. There's nothing on the back of these. You cannot get towed backwards, only forwards. So all you do is simply just pop a key in there or a little screwdriver so you can pop that off and there's a, a, tow, a screw and tow pin in the locker on the back there so it just screws in there there is a little tow rope under the seat inside which I'll show you in a bit which screws in there yeah, which you can hook on sorry to get towed out but any damage anything caused by getting towed off will be billed to the customer and as I say there's nothing on the back so if you do get stuck and you have to get towed backwards it's going to have to be a recovery company I'm afraid because they're going to have to go underneath to the chassis and tow you off. Right, on the passenger side of the vehicle, you have your diesel goes in here and you add blue, so simple as open the door. So as you can see, you've got your diesel filler fuel point here, diesel only remember, no petrol. You just see on the front here, diesel only. And they also do take add blue as well. Now we will fill this up when you pick the vehicle up so it will be full of add blue. But should you be on a long hire, it might flash up on the dash and it needs filled up. Don't ignore it if that comes up. Make sure you do go to the local service station and you can buy like a little five litre drum of it. Add blue it's called and just pour it in there and fill it up. I say if you do let it run out, it will the engine will stop and will cause damage to the vehicle. All our vehicles do come with RAC breakdown cover. So if you do have any issues with them, there'll either be a number on the windscreen here or on a bit of paper on the back of the visor on the passenger side so I advise you just give them a call give them the vehicle registration number then uh, your location then you'll get somebody out there then you can give us a call and we'll keep on top of them after that and make sure they are coming out to sort you also if you do get a puncture or anything like that there is a spare tyre slung underneath on the back and the wheel brace and jack and everything are in the back garages on these but you can also give them a call and they will come out and change it over for you see if you're faffing on trying to jack it up and climb under the back and get the spare wheel and everything out of yet. So we'll just give them a call and they can sort that out for you. So your habitation door, so as I said before, this one little key will work your habitation door and all your lockers on the outside. So to open it, put it in, turn it to the left, half a turn, and it'll open. And to lock it, half a turn to the right, and that's it locked. Right now your toilet cassette. So when you need to empty your toilet cassette, same key as your habitation door, as I said. Put it in this top locker, turn to the right, half a turn, take it out. Now you push this one and this one in together, and the door will open. So now, there is a little reminder on here. So before you try to pull this out, make sure you shut the blade on the toilet inside. This handle is the blade I was talking about. So if you lift the bowl, at the moment, this is the blade on the bottom here, it's shut. So that needs to be shut to pull the cassette out. So 
the handle should be to the left like this and the seed opener just slides across and as you can see it's opened the blade there but as I say to remove that cassette outside it must be in a shut position like that towards the left so as long as it blades shut on the toilet as I just said there all you do is lift this little blue catch here and the cassette will slide out so you lift that blue cassette and slide it out so all you do is take it to the Elson point on the site spin that and take the cap off and just tip it up on the Elson point and hold this little blue button in here that'll let the air in and let all the waste come out once you've emptied it put some fresh water down there off the hose give it a squish around and do the same again, tip it out then the toilet cassette blue that's in the gas locker on the other side all you do is pour about that much straight in here and screw the cap back on don't pour it down the toilet or you'll stain the bowl on the toilet make sure you just pour it in there, literally about that much it's not a lot straight in there and screw the cap back on then slide that back around and just simply slide it back in until you get that click as I say if you are going to remove when you are removing this if you go to lift that up and there's any resistance there that means the blade's not shut or not shut properly so just click it back in just that little bit go back inside and make sure the blade just open and shut it then it should come out it should move effort effortlessly like that there should be no resistance whatsoever and as I say shut it again and lock it now on the rear of the vehicle at the passenger side you've got this flue here this is for your heating so if you've got the heating on or the hot water on gas it's blowing the fumes out of here so if you try to open this window above it it will knock the heating and the hot water off it'll come up a warning on the, the panel inside so it's the only window that you can't have open when you've got the heating and the hot water on the rest you can right so your compartment lockers the way these work is what you do is you put the key in turn it and it'll pop out then you turn it around like that and the same with the bottom one then that'll let your door open now as you can see in your storage compartment here you have your outside chairs outside table this ladder here is for the drop down bed on the front inside you have a charcoal barbecue at the back there your water hose for filling your water tank the electric hookup lead and some leveling ramps and that bag over the back and there's your wheel brace and jack and the tow pin which goes on the front tow point which I told you about before now to lock these simple as just shut the door turn it round it pulls the door in and exactly the same as the bottom one then if you just put the key back in do that half a turn again and give it a tap and to go in like that and stay in same with the bottom one like that and that's unlocked right now the motorhome does come with a four capacity bike rack on the back this is for standard bikes not electric bikes because they're a bit heavier them so you probably only get two of them on and so you might have to remove the batteries if you can and put them in the garage on the back to make it lighter so what you do with this is simply you've got your catches here, just flip them open, drop it down, you put each bike on a separate one, and all you do is simply just adjust these, put them over each wheel and tighten them up so they hold the wheel, so one here, one that side, and select one of these, whichever bike you've got on, move it up, and flip it over the frame and screw it on to it tightens up and that'll hold your bike on. It's probably advisable if you're bringing a bikes to maybe bring a lock and chain so that way you can put it around here and you've got all your bikes on a bit extra security and also if you stop somewhere nobody can just literally walk away with your bike because all they've got to do is undo these and undo that and they're away with your bike. At least if you've got a lock and chain on there it's, it's secure you know. Now see when you're done with it make sure you strap all these back up properly all these are folded away like that then pop it back up just put the catches back on like that 
And as I say, it's always a good thing to do is when you're traveling with it, always stop periodically and check the bikes, make sure they're nice and secure on the back, especially before you start your journey. So as you see on the driver's side here, you also have the garage compartment locker, exactly the same as you have on the other side, which mirrors it. The locks and everything exactly the same. So you can see in that way. On this side though, you can flip the door around. There's a little catch here, which holds it back so it doesn't flap around in the wind. That other side's got a spring on to help stop it flapping around in the wind. So I say make sure you use that so it doesn't cause any damage to the motorhome. Now if you're on a pitch and you've got an electric hookup, you've got an electric hookup lead in the garage on the back. Exactly the same as this one. So you've got a male and a female end. So this end goes to the motorhome and this end goes to the campsite. So all you do simply is just lift this little catch up, lift the lid up on it and it just slides on there until it clicks like that and that's it. Then plug your other end in to the campsite and that will get you 240 running into the motorhome. It's always best to hook up the motorhome first then hook up to the campsite so that way you're not carrying the live lead back to the motorhome. And as I say yours is on a reeler so unreal it all, maybe it's just tuck the surplus underneath the motorhome because it kind of gets hot when it's wrapped up like this so if it's out and at least it keeps it cool. When you need to remove it, there's a little catch on the side here all you do is just simply push that down, hold it down and pull it and it releases it and you can store it away back in the garage compartment on the back. So that's that little lever there I was talking about so that has to be down so you can pull the plug off if you try to pull it off, it won't release it. You have to hold that down and pull the plug. Right now we have gas locker. So the lock works exactly the same as the garage locks do. Open and shut. So when you pick the motorhome up, it's got two gas bottles. So one will always be full and one will have what's left of the previous hire in it. And also in here you have your toilet cassette blue. So when you're changing your toilet cassette, this is the blue that you put in, what I showed you. So all you do is put about that much in, about an inch of it in, and empty it. Always start in here, because if it spills or anything, at least it'll run out the bottom of the tray in here, and not stay in the inside of the motorhome. Right, how to operate your gas bottle. So you've got this little brass die at the top here. All you do is turn that anti-clockwise, until it stops. Now that's got the gas flowing into the van, so it's through this pipe now and away into the van. So now your heating and your hobbit etc will be getting gas supply. Should you need to turn it off or turn it off before you set off traveling, same again, that brass dial, just screw it clockwise this time until it stops and that knocks it off. Should this bottle run out and you need to switch over to your spare ball, Exactly the same with this black dial. You simply just unscrew it so it's clockwise. We'll unscrew it. Try that. Then move it over to this one, unscrew the bung, and screw it in there. Then turn it on at the top, and that'll get your gas flowing. If you manage to run both bottles dry, you can take it to your local colour gas place or on the campsites usually they've got a colour gas exchange thing. You can exchange a bottle. So it's generally about 20 odd pound to change one of the smaller ones and it's 30 odd pound to change one of those ones and that'll get you going again. Nine times out of ten most customers don't need to change them. I'll do them for the higher they've got. All you simply do as you see is undo this hose, undo the tie, take the bottle, they'll exchange it for a fresh one. Give you a full one. Bring the full one back, pop it in, make sure it's tied in with the strap and hook it back up with the pipe at the top. Right now your fresh water tank, you have a 100 litre fresh water tank hidden underneath the seat inside. You can keep an eye on the level on the gauge, I'll show you that in a minute. So to fill it, all you do is simply get the same key again, pop it in the cap, turn it and the cap will pop off. Get the hose, so either connect the one you've got in the garage on the back to the campsite or the campsite might have one and just simply just pop it in 
turn it on and when it's full it'll flow back out of here that way you know it's full and then as I say so if you just take the hose out key again cap on and plug it and knock it shut now all the fresh water that you're using out the tank inside that ends up down a sinkhole will end up in your waste water tank which is located underneath behind this gas locker in the back. So on the campsite there should be a dump station, a grey water dump station. Basically a grate in the ground, something like that. So you drive over the top of that and get it roughly about two foot in from where this is. Then if you follow me down here there's a handle here. So this is your handle here. If you follow it along you can see the spout there. So all you do is just give that a pull, it'll drain out. Then when it's full, push it back in. And that's it done. All you do is just pull this handle like that and all the water will dump out. Then when it's empty, it's stopped running. All you do is push the handle back in. And that's it done. Now the rule of thumb is with your fresh water and your waste is every time you fill your fresh water, always dump your waste tank because they're the same size tanks so you can't get too fresh into one waste it'll just start to back up into your shower etc so every time you fill your fresh water in here always dump your waste water under here right now we've made it around to the driver's side of the vehicle so when you hop on the driver's side above you you've got your sun visor if you flip that down you've got your heights up here for bridges so 10 foot 6, 3.25 meters so take extra caution for bridges and garage forecourts and also trees etc hanging over the side of the road which you usually not be used to looking for. Uh, no drive throughs and no multi-storey car parks for these. I've heard a few horror stories of them over the years. Right, how to use your rear view camera and your sat nav. So it's all built on this uh, display in the middle of the dash here. So on the bottom here you've got cam, so if you press that your rear view camera will come on that will also come on as soon as you put the vehicle into reverse that will come on but if you want to see it while you're driving anything you can just press cam and it will come on navigation just press the nav button and it will let you on so you can use your navigation system and you've also got the DAB radio on here as well as well as You've got your Bluetooth connectivity here, if you want to connect your phone to it. And your handbrake. Now your handbrake works a bit different on these. So it's on the right side of you, so if you look down here to my right, here's the handbrake. Right, how to use your handbrake. So put your foot on the brake, hold it down. These ones are always drop down. So all you do is simply, as you say, put your hand Right, how to use your handbrake. So on the right hand side here when you're sitting in the driver's seat, on these models the handbrake always drops down, so as you can see, there's nothing on it. So all you do is put your foot on the brake. Hold it in and just lift it up until it stops. Hold the button in, drop it down, and it'll go off. And the light will go off on the dash. And to put it back on, same again, foot on the brake, and just lift it up, just like that, just one or two ratchets, and it'll just drop down like that. But the light will come back on the dash. If you do something wrong, the light will stay on the dash and it will bleep at you to tell you that it's not off correctly. So as you can see your handbrake light's on there, so if I drop it down, it'll go off, put it back on, back on. Right, how do you use your automatic gearbox? So put your foot on the brake and hold it down, and there's a little button on the top of the stalk here. Just push that in, and that'll let you move down through the 
choices. So pays for park, so that's when you park the vehicle. R for reverse, N is for neutral, D is for drive, and M is if you want to use manual, and you have up and down on the side here for the gears. Probably you only have to use D for drive, R for reverse, and P to park. It does show you on the dash as well, there you can see, so if I move it down to R, you can see reverse side up there, down to drive, back to P for park. These motorhomes do have stop start on so if you stop at the lights it will knock the engine off and put it back on when you go to pull away. Now if you want to check your ad blue level to make sure you're not, you're not running out but see it should come up on the dash for you. All you do is these little three buttons here click it and it brings a menu up there. Let's just scroll down you can see it. So then all you do is with this little arrow here, just go down till you get to maintenance and push it in, say OK. And there it's got add blue range, down add blue range, click it. And as you can see at the moment, it's saying three and a half thousand miles. So generally it comes on at around 1200 I believe, 1200 miles and flashes up every 100 mile after that but 99% of hires will get away without filling that up it's only for people if they're on the long term hires and I say if you need to exit the menu just press that one keep pressing it until it goes back to the original menu That was a couple of quick little tips when you're driving a motorhome remember your height, remember your length and your width Width is a very important thing with these wing mirrors. We've got a lot of these wing mirrors smashed off every year. And they're expensive to replace and they're hard to get replaced if you're out on site. Especially around Scotland, trying to get people to fix them, nearly impossible. So always take care with these because they'll stick out a long way and people don't realise. And say if you're on site, you can't push them in so people don't knock them except on the site. As I say, remember your heights, so the bridges, garage forecourts, etc. Uh, also, trees, people that drive cars a lot aren't used to looking at overhanging trees on the side of the road, so watch you don't hit the sides of the motorhome and scratch it and damage it. Length, exactly the same, so when you're taking corners, remember that back end's going to swing out, whichever way you're going, so take your corners extra wide and watch for people on this side here that you don't clip them. Going up and down hills, so remember if you're going up a hill, as the motorhome goes up, that back end starts to drop down. So you've got to make sure you've got plenty of clearance on there and the back end does not hit the ground. Especially if you're going on any ferries or anything like that, across to the islands in Scotland and stuff like that. Always take extra caution, just slowly edge on, get somebody to watch you. And as you say, make sure you don't ground the vehicle out, stuff like that. Right, so over your cab, this little bag here has your screen blinds in. So these, you've got side window ones and your windscreen one. So they go on the two front side windows and your windscreen. Grey side goes facing outwards and they've got little suckers on, which just suck on the windscreen. So, I'll put the front one on just to show you for now. Just like that. That and I'll see you've got your two side ones on which go on as well so nobody can see in at night. Right now when you get set up with a motorhome you can spin these two front seats around so I'll just show you the two catches now on which you have to flip on the bottom of where you want catch sorry on the bottom of the seat. This catch here is the spin the chair and this is your standard catch for forward and balance. So what you do with that top just simply just click it and it lets the seats spin round so you know I'm facing backwards. But as you see the seats have to be forward when you're travelling obviously so the click back like that way they're secure. 
The driver's one's a bit more awkward because you've got to get around the steering wheel. So you might have to come backwards and forwards a bit. Maybe just get the halfway, turn it back and around like that. Then you bring it by a bit. And that's that one round. This table, just on this edge here, there's a small little lever, you just squeeze it and then you can position the table a bit better once you set up. So let me get round it a bit better and set it. Put it back when you're travelling. This is the catch here, so all you simply do is just hold it in like that and it allows your table to move around and release it. it holds the table in place. Right, you have your two travelling seats in the dinette area here, so you've got your seat belts with your clips in, one hanging down the side there as well. You can remove this cushion here and the plank underneath it, so that way you can sit properly when travelling. Right, so all you do is just take this top cushion off, and this base plank just sits in there like that. That removes and you can store it away in the cupboard at the back. Now you can sit two people here in comfort when you're travelling. Now in the dinette area you also have two little 12 volt USBs there for charging phones etc. And your 240 volt socket is on the back of this cupboard on this side. So I'll come round you should see it. And you have your cupboard above. Now to open these what you do is to handle it down and towards you. This one's got your TV handset in, little board game sets and playing cards and an electrical extension. You've got a bit of storage over the cab and this one on this side opens exactly the same. This one's got your electric kettle in there and your place mats. Right, so under this seat you have your uh, 12 volt trip switches and all your emergency stuff like breakdown stuff, first aid kits etc. Hopefully it's something you've never got to go into but this is where it is. So just pop the cushions off. You see they just held on my little velcro patches. If you lift this, you've got your 12 volt trip switches here, pack of spare fuses. Yeah, high vis jackets, bulb kit, warning triangle, small little tool kit, first aid kit, and the tow ropes in there as well. So hopefully that's something you never need to go into, but that's where all that's stored if you need an ink. Now you have your uh, over cab window here, so you've got your fly screen on, and you've also got a, a blind for a night. Now if you wish to open this, you have to open these here first, on either side, make sure these little things are undone, open these two and it will push up and hold it in place, just screw them too tight again and it will let some fresh air into the van and see when you want to shut it, just the reverse. Nip the four catches shut and just nip them up. But make sure this is shut when you're travelling, don't have it open. You have a fire extinguisher and fire blanket near the door. Hopefully, it's something you never need to use, but that's where they are. Now, on the door, you have your bin. There is some bags for this bin in the cupboard here. And if you open the door, you have a fly screen on as well, which falls across. So you get any flies or midges if you're up in Scotland. Just make sure that you do have this door pushed back. But watch, because if it's a bit windy, that catch just don't hold very well. And the door slam round and the bin will go through the fly screen. So it's best not to have it 
fly screen across if it is a bit windy keep the door shut now to work this lock to lock it when you're inside simply just flick it up and that locks the door and I see it to unlock it again just put it down like that and that's it right how to work your TV so as long as on your habitation panel here you have interior lights switched on because that sends power to the telly that needs to be on so you come back to your telly you should have this little red light on underneath here which means it's getting power now in this overhead locker here is your telly handset so simply power on there you go it's come on should the telly have lost the channels if you've changed areas with the van as well, obviously it'll lose the channels on the telly handset you've got a menu button here press the menu button scroll along to your right till you come to settings and then you want to go down to where it says channel click channel click channels and channel scan then it'll start to search for channels as you can see there it's found the channels these TVs also have a smart side on them so if you've got accounts with like Netflix or YouTube or Prime etc Amazon Prime you can log on and watch them so if you just press the home button which is on the top left here that'll bring up all them so you can start to flick through stuff on there and see a sign in your accounts etc on there For any reason, should the Wi-Fi not be working, what you need to do is simply go back to the menu, scroll along, back to settings, and you've got network and internet there. So whichever van you've got, the internet, uh, the passwords here, sorry there. AO60 and the password for this one so we'd be looking on there for AO60 but we're connected so all you simply do is, is go on there click that one connect to it which is already connected but you'll just type the password in and as I say that's a password for this one there they're all different in each van but they're all above the habitation panel you just put that password in and it will let you on and you should be to see this get the smart side of things to work and hopefully if you're struggling to find a terrestrial channel you can find something to watch on the smart side of things as you see on YouTube or Netflix sort of things or My5 and that now if you're searching for the Wi-Fi and you can't find it first come to this top cupboard here open it see this little box at the back here make sure all these three wires are in the bottom and any of them haven't fell out when you're traveling and just tap that little power button and you need the screen to look like that if it doesn't look like that and it's got like a picture of a big battery or something on simply just hold that power button in until it powers up and that comes on like that then that should let you on the internet now you can swing your telly out a bit if you want if you just flip that little handle there it'll pull out let you position the telly a bit better and then see to put it back in just simply push it back in and just make sure that clicks in just like that or when you're traveling see sometimes when you're traveling the aerial wire or the power wire might come loose so just make sure they're pushed in correctly and in the top there as well if you're having trouble getting the telly to power on right now your kitchenette so above you here you've got your little cupboard you've got your cups, plates, glasses gas kettles in there if you're on gas and not on electric for the electric one air beakers in there etc so make cups so like that you have another 240 volt socket here for plugging stuff in so you've got the extension in that front cupboard if you plug it in there you can have your kettle here or toaster etc 
Now this cupboard, to open these you just push the button in it pops out and lets the cupboard open. Now you have a box on here, oh, got some cleaning products in for you and all your cutlery etc is in this top one and the uh, utensils hanging up there and down here you have all your pots and pans etc in here. Now your hob, so as long as the gas is on at the gas bottle, so you just lift the lid, select which one you want, one for each burner, push it in, turn it, it'll spark and it's away. So in the seat to turn off, simply just turn it back and it'll go off. Well, if you've had this on for a while, don't put this glass lid down because it'll be hot and it'll just shatter the lid. So leave it up for a bit, let it cool down and then put the lid down. But always make sure this is down when you're travelling so it doesn't drop and smash. On the Madison Marie, you have a different oven to what's on the Kayla Louise. So basically you just slide the hand at the side and it'll open. All you do is just hold it and turn it around and spark and it's away. There's no grill function on this one, just an oven. You see it turn it back off, just knock it around so the little black lines pointing upwards and you can see the flame go off at the back. You have a drawer underneath this one which has your cutlery in and underneath here this is where your 240 trip switch is in this one where on the Kayla Louise it's in this cupboard. Right so you have your fridge freezer here so to open this you've got this little handle just flick it to the side hold it aside as it'll open. Small little freezing compartment there, your fridge and on the bottom if you look that one up you've got a bottle cooler. So the way this works is you can either run it off mains electric or gas but when you're traveling 12 volt battery which is a cab battery so this is the power button here so hold that power button in it'll power up the best thing to do is just leave it on automatic that way it'll select which power source it wants itself so at the minute it's gone automatic and it's selected electric because we're an electric hook up here so if I hold this button in I can choose which power source I want myself so if I go along there's electric there's battery for vehicle battery and there's gas so if I leave it on automatic confirm it that lets you set the temperature so the more, more bars the colder so see I'm happy with that one there just click it so it's a way to electric and it's a way to there so the best thing to do when you get set up is come in and just tap this little button here and just make sure so it's gone off there so if I tap that little button it's gone automatic it's on electric so if you want to do use on electric it should be on electric if you want gas the gas symbol should be on you only ever want battery when you're traveling because if you leave it on battery it'll just drain the cab battery and you're not be to start the van so that's how you use your fridge right so in your bedroom now if you lift this part of the bed up you do have a bit of under bed storage here so you can store some bits on there and you've got two little small wardrobes on your side and two cupboards above and some down lighters underneath there as well this light is a touch one you just touch it like that and it comes on and off. Right, you have two roof vents in the vehicle here. So the way these work is you have a fly screen and you have your night blinds for a night. If you want to open them, you just push this button in here, pull the handle down, then move it to the side like that, and let's you open it right up. Or you can have it like half open. And you see it to shut it. Make sure it's back and that's clicked in like that. So make sure these are shut when you're traveling though. Because if you don't they'll, they'll get damaged and fly off and gets broken. So always shut them before you head off. Right now your windows. So the way your windows work is you've got your fly screen on and your night blind. So the way these work is you've got like a little catch on the side, little hook. So what you do is it's locked on that position there so you just take it down a bit and towards you and it'll release. Don't just try and rive it up like that because all you do is snap the clips on the end so just down a little bit towards you then it releases. So you can take it right to the bottom if you want, make it dark at night. If you need to open the windows, push these buttons in, and turn the handles, so there's four of them to undo on each window, and just slide it out and turn them in 
and that'll lock it open. And the opposite. Just shut that oh. If you've got the heating on, set to gas, and you open this window, this is the only window in the whole motorhome that's got the Truma switch on because the flue is outside so it will knock the heating off so I'll put a little uh, warning on here for you so what will happen is if you open the window it will knock the heating off that way it's not blowing there's no chance of the gases outside blowing back in the van and you're gassing yourselves all the other windows are fine just this one window but you can see the Truma boxes on there and there's, there's a warning on it right your shower not great a lot to explain about this one right but You've got two plugs in the bottom, just make sure they're out when you're using it. Then all you do is just undo the clips. And as you see, the, it'll just pop around. It's easier when you're in the shower to do it, but just clips together. That's so, on the inside, and that gives you your shower. As long as the water pumps on, on the control panel, which I'll show you in a moment, just hot and cold, and the water will come out to you. And you've also got a handy rail up here for hanging wet towels or wet clothes up if you've come in from the rain. That way they can drip dry in the shower. Now your toilet area. Now this door here, you can open it, shut it there. That way it closes the living area off from the bedroom. Now your toilet. Before you use your toilet, what you have to do is... I'll take the camera off. So, lift the lid up. Now see this grey handle here? That's called a blade. So what that does is it shuts the cassette off. So nothing can go in the cassette. So what you have to do before you use it is slide that to the right and it opens the blade. So that way all your business or whatever you do will go down and in the cassette. Then to flush it, simple as push that blue button as long as the water pumps on the habitation panel and that will flush it. Then after you're done always get in the habit of shutting it so it's shut to the left open to the right so always get in the habit of closing it after you've used the toilet and as I see you've got a window in here as well if you want to let a bit of fresh air in and you have your overhead locker there opens exactly the same as the other ones with your face cloths in light switches here mirror sink and underneath here, you have some towels. This little gauge here, that's how you know the level of the toilet. So green is empty, it gets redder and redder, that's how you know it's full. Right, now your front drop down bed over the dinette. So make sure there's nobody sitting in the dinette area, or standing in the dinette area. Make sure your TV is stored away out the way. Then. This little button here, just push it, it'll start to drop down. Keep an eye on the telly, make sure it doesn't catch it. That's it. Now your ladder, which will be stored in the garage area at the back. Simply just hooks in, like that. And that'll allow you access up, so if I go up and I'll show you how big it is. So that's me. So you could get somebody next to you there comfortably. I would say ideally like one adult, one child, or two children. Two adults, mm, be a bit cosy I think. Right, you have a, a safety net which pulls out underneath all the way around. It just simply hooks up to these catches all the way around. So if you've got young kids in there and you worry about the rolling out, that'll stop that. Uh, when you're putting the bed away, make sure it, as it is, just with this base sheet on. No pillows, no duvets. And just push the button back up and away it goes. If you try to send it with something, sorry, try to send it up with something on, it thinks there's somebody on the bed and just cuts off and trips this 12 volt switch. You have to go in and change the little 12 volt switch. So that's your drop down bed. Right, now how to work your habitation panel. So press the home button, it'll wake up in a second. So now, starting from the top here, resources, that tells your vehicle battery level at the top and your leisure battery level. This top one here is your fresh water level and the bottom one is your wastewater level. So they're currently empty at the moment. So 
if I was to fill that up, it would say 100%. It only ever shows 100%, 66%, 33%, or 0. I always say, when it gets to 33%, Think right, I need to fill it up and dump me waste water. When you want to refill it, before you start to refill, come in here and press refill on there. Then when you refill it outside and overflows, come back in and it should say confirm, just confirm it. To go back, just press the back arrow. Switches. That one turns on your outdoor light, so your outside awning light. This one sends power to all your interior lights and your TV. So if I put that one. All the lights come on and your TV powers up. This one sends power to your water pump. So you need that on for your taps to work, your shower to work, your toilet flush to work. Go back. Now heating. So we'll click this one. You've got the choice of heating or ventilating. Heating. So what you've got to do first is go here to energy source. And tell it what you're going to be using, either gas or electric or both. So at the minute I've got gas on and electric off. So if I go back, inside is currently 7 degrees, so I've got it set to 22. If you want it higher, just plus it. If you want it less, just minus it. And it'll start to go flash orange like that. That means it's working and it's going to start to build the temperature up. So you've got comfort or fast, that's basically how fast you want the warm air blown out of these little vents which are all around the motorhome and the fall like that. So basically it's like, kind of like a car, low or high. So it's basically low or high if you look at it that way. So that's working now and starting to build the temperature up to get the temperature inside the van to 22. Right, so in the summer, if you need to blow a bit of cool air around the van, so at the minute I've got the heating on, so if I just uh, turn that off. So if you go to room climate, click room climate, you've got ventilating there, so click that one, then all you do is just simply just plus to how fast you want the fan blown, maximum of 10, so whatever you want. And what that'll do is that'll just circulate cool air around the van. It's not air conditioned, it's basically just circulating the air what's inside the van around, but it does help cool the van down in the summer. So that's how you'd use that. Now, warm water is exactly the same. You'll just turn it on, select what power source you want, go back, you've got the choice of 40 degrees for dishes, 60 degrees or 70. I usually say just leave it at 60 and it'll build up at 60 degrees and do its thing. So if I just turn that off because I've got no water in the boiler at the moment, it'll turn it off. <laughs> if you get a warning error comes up or anything, so say you've done something wrong, say like you're trying to run your heating and etc off gas and you've got no, you haven't got the gas turned on or something, it will come up a notification in here and that's how you clear it. You follow through the instructions, see what it is and clear it. Right, how to reset an error code. So I've set the heating off on gas, but what I've done is I've turned the gas bottle off so it's not getting any gas. So it should come up soon, red fault. I mean. There you go, it's come up that. So if I just press OK, go to notifications, click it. And if I go outside now and turn the gas back on. Right, I've just been out and turned the gas bottle back on. So the best thing to do when you've turned the gas bottle back on, say you've run out of gas and you've changed the bottle over, is just come to the hob and just try and lighten it. That way it like purges the gas through and gets it going. Then you can go back to the control panel. Unlock it because it's Go back notifications. Problem is, and if you scroll down to the bottom, it's got declare issue resolved. So if I click that, then I see and reset the error. That one. Okay. Now the heating should come on and start to work again. 
There you go, she's working again. So that's how you reset an error. So as you see, that stands for whether it's electric one or gas one or anything. And as you see, the list of the error codes is up here. So you can find out what they are. And try and resolve the problem that way. When you've remedied the error. There is a list in here this top cupboard of all the error faults that would ever come up so that's how you know what it is so if it comes up one of them error codes there you just look on here see what it is rectify the problem then come to notifications and clear it uh, the best way to know if you're hooked up on electric hookup like we are now this little plug socket should come on in the top corner that way you know you're getting 240 into the motorhome if it doesn't come on and you're hooked up check the fuse box Whoop, one moment in this cupboard here is the fuse box at the back this is Kayla Louise uh, just to see whether you can see if there's any of the trips tripped if they're not tripped check the campsite make sure they're not tripped and they're giving you power but you should always have that little plug socket and that way you know you're getting 240 in the van Now to turn it off, I'll go back to the screen. So if you're on, if you've got it all set and leave it on. If you're going out for the day and say, but you want to leave your hot water and heating on, and you're going out, to see if you're switching all the switches off all the way around the van, just go back to switches and just do that. And that'll turn all the lights off. And go home, then you can just leave your heating on if you want. Or if you want to turn everything off, if you don't want anything running through the day, just go turn off, shut down, and it will shut everything down for you. So in this top cupboard of your habitation panel you have your error codes for your heating system and hot water system so should any show up on this panel that's how you find out what they are. Your Wi-Fi is at the back there and your electric toasters there. Right sockets and switches around the motorhome so as I see in the dining area here you've got Two 12 volt ones there. On the bottom of these above, un above units, in this corner, if you just tap it like that, you've got a strip lights on them. You've got a 240 volt socket on the back of that seat there. And I see this one above here is a little tappy one the same. Light switches there. You have tap you one on that one and you have a 240 volt socket there plug stuff in and there is an extension in that little cupboard there so that way you can plug it in there and have something set up here like your kettle or your toast etc yeah moving on on the roof here that one is a tap you one for on and off you have the ones at the back of the bed We've got switches on. You have an on and off switch here for the lights around the bed at the back. And in your bathroom, oh, there's Michelle, the star and rules. You have your on and off switch up there for your light. So basically, the only 240 volt sockets you've got in the whole van is. The one there and the one on the back of that seat. You have one behind the telly, but it's, it's a bit awkward to try and plug anything in there and use. So that's all your sockets around the van. Uh, other than you do have a USB on the dash for when you're traveling if you need to charge something. Right, so what to do when you arrive at your site? Uh, on the way in the site, if you haven't already got your water tank full, best to fill that on the way in at the water station. Unless you've got a service pitch and you've got water on your pitch. So make sure that's full. And when you get on your pitch, best thing to do is get part of your pitch. Step back from the motorhome, just have a look at it. See if you think it looks level enough. If it's maybe down in the front or something there, or down at the back. Get your leveling ramps out the garage in the back. Your leveling ramps and all you do with these 
you just slide them under whatever wheel you want and just drive up it. So you've got two stages, or three basically, one, two, and three. And then get the van as level as you possibly can, iron it in. And that's how you use them. Then get your electric hookup lead out. So yours will be in the garage on the back. Simple as. Just connect it up. That gets your 240 running in the van. Turn your gas spot, turn it on. Then go into the motorhome. Do your next bits. So what you would do is you would come in, press the home button on there, unlock the screen, go to switches, turn your interior lights on, which will turn all the lights on, then set your heating and your hot water, select gas or electric, whatever you're going to be using, and that's your panel up and running. Your fridge should already be on because you should have had it on. So it should be on automatic, just make sure it's selected what power source you're going to want to be using, either electric or gas. If not, move it across by holding a little outline button in and move it along. So see you're wanting no, I want electric, move it to the electric symbol, click it. Happy with that temperature, click it, and that's it away. And as you see, that's basically your setup then, ready to go. Right, above the cab at the front here, over the passenger side, there is a little file here which runs through how things work in the van. Uh, and there's also got a copy of gas certificate and things in there, should anybody have asked, but nobody ever does, but it's there. Uh, TV instructions and that there in there. But I will also be putting on this wall here. This is your return times and what to check to make sure you've done, redone in the van before you return it. I'll be putting a little one on here that'll have a QR code on, which will take you to this video. So you can scan it and watch how to do things around the van if you forgot on anything or you need to know how to do the telly stuff like that. It'll all be on that little QR code there so you just scan it with your phone and you can watch it. Right, when you're ready to leave, make sure you walk around the van inside, make sure all these windows are shut properly, all the roof vents are shut properly. Uh, make sure you've stored your windscreen blinds away so the windscreen blinds inside here, make sure you've took them off and put them in there little bag. You've turned the front two seats around so they're facing forwards. Uh, make sure all the cupboards and everything are shut correctly and all that. Uh, any loose items are stored away. Your habitation panel has been powered off so that's turned off. Uh, come outside, uh, remove your levelling ramps if you use them, store them away in the back of the van. Turn your gas off, the gas bottle. Unhook your power lead. Hold that little cap down, pull it off, and store that away in the garage on the back. Make sure all your external lockers are locked. Make sure everything's stored away in them first, then make sure they're all locked. Make sure your bike rack on the back, if you're using it, make sure your bikes are on and they're all secure and everything before you set off. Just give the van a quick walk around the outside. Make sure everything looks all right in that before you head off. Then on your way out the site, always best to dump your wastewater under here. So pull a handle under there when you get at the waste dump station, dump your fresh water and probably empty your toilet at the same time while you're there. So that way it's nice and fresh for when you arrive at the next site. There is a list in the driver's door. So as you see arrive on site, getting set up what to do, leave on site, basically run around the whole van, check you've done everything. So to keep you right. So, Hope you have a nice time away in one of our motorhomes and thank you for choosing Breakaway Camp Van here.